out with reviewing this latest OP live stream, I want to bring on my friend Eric, who hosts the YouTube channel Speaking for Funny. Eric, you there, buddy? Yep, I'm here. Thanks for having me on. Oh, thanks so much for coming on. I've been watching your videos, and I finally reached out to you and said, we got to get you on to talk about this, because you seem to be very knowledgeable about all things Opie and Anthony, and I love the videos you put together where you show that Opie is losing his mind on these live streams. You do a great job of documenting that. Oh, thanks, man. I appreciate it. I mean, uh, you know, it's not too hard to show that Opie's losing his mind. I could really just play the clips, but... Glad you like the videos. No, you do a really nice job with it. Uh, really well edited and put together. You also get deep into contract negotiations with Jim and Sam, and you seem to be all over this whole universe. So I thought it'd be great to get you on the show and get your perspective on uh, Opie and, and what's been going on with him. You can also find Eric on Twitter, at Funny Speaking is your Twitter handle if people want to uh, check that out. But your, uh, your YouTube channel is pretty active. How often are you dropping videos on there? Uh, right now it's about every two weeks, but trying to bump that up uh, just a bit, just a bit. And uh, hopefully it'll be somewhere more around once a week uh, going into the new year. And one of the things you do on your videos is you play Tetris. So anytime you're not showing something else that's going on that you're talking about, you're playing Tetris on there. And I'm just curious, why am I so compelled by that? Why am I watching that so closely? I have no idea. I see a lot of people saying uh, in the comments that they come there just for the Tetris. Uh, I don't know. I think it's better than like every fucking channel puts out some shooter game. Nobody wants to watch that. Everybody loves Tetris. I, Jerry Banfield can learn something from you. You know, just play yeah. Tetris and say crazy shit. And you'll have a million subscribers overnight. Apparently that's how it goes. There is something about watching Tetris and the style of play. I assume that's you playing it. Am I wrong about yep. that? Okay. You, yeah, uh, you can see I've uh, improved a lot from my first video. <laughs> well, I, didn't, I can't tell you that. I, I will take your word for it. But uh, You uh, haven't seen all of my videos? What the I fuck am I doing on this podcast? I haven't documented every single uh, game of Tetris you've ever played. I've been very yeah. busy with Opie, and uh, apparently Opie is getting headaches from having gay intercourse. Man, I haven't oh. felt that great. I've had headaches for like... Uh three or four straight days. And then we got some action in the back, got some uh, backdoor action going on. All right. I'll be that. That might be TMI <laughs> for this audience. Yeah. Now I want to, <laughs> I want to talk to you about this stream because Opie is fired up. It's right before Christmas. He's telling everyone, look, I want, he's on the beach again. He's like, I wanted to do a stream because I'm probably going to be off the next week and a half spending time with the family. So this is my chance to just wish everyone a Merry Christmas and I love this style of Opie because he obviously doesn't have a lot of human interaction. He even mentions at one point there's a guy in the background jogging. It's like the first person he's seen all day, you know, which is not easy to do when you're in Long Island. But yeah, you know, he said that was the first person he's seen all day. And it was 3 p.m. when he started that live stream. <laughs> right. So yes. he went that entire day. His kids just gone out of the house. His wife isn't there. It's just been Opie. Actually, you have a clip on that. But I have no idea, man, if I've had it. I um, I would assume I did not. I mean, I'm like, I, I've been kind of a recluse by nature, if you can't tell. I mean, that's the first person I've seen today walking way, way in the distance. You'll see him pop out from uh, my head in a second. So, like, I'm, I've been a bit of a recluse. So, uh, uh, I think... Uh, there's the guy. That's the first person I've seen today. <laughs> Holy shit, my life is weird. Yeah, <laughs> that is weird. Where's your family? Yeah, that's a little odd there, Opie. And it's funny, too, because when the stream starts off, the first question that comes in, because, you know, he's reading questions from the chat. The first one that comes in is, where's Doggy? And I think it's funny because I remember back when I listened to Opie and Anthony and the show would start off and you wouldn't hear Anthony's voice. You're like, oh. Where's, where's Anthony? Is Anthony there today? Because I don't want to listen to this. And I think that people feel the same way about Doggy. Like, if, if his sidekick Doggy's not there, it's like, well, I'm not going to watch this live stream. Not if there's no Doggy. Yeah. <laughs> he said that multiple times. He thinks the dog is more popular than him, and most people seem to agree. You know what else is really interesting? I don't know if I'm being lied to, but somebody in my chat said that that dog, that's not its real name. That 
Opie's wife told him to keep the dog's name private for some reason. <laughs> I believe that. I totally believe that. They, I mean, she is a target. I mean, I can't even imagine how often she's getting uh, bam comments sent to her in every single form <sighs> on social media. I'm sure she's like, Opie, can you just do me a favor and just keep everything private, please? Yeah. Well, she should get him off the fucking live stream. I don't know why she's still allowing him to do that, but the dog's name has to be private. It is true. And Opie, he's, he gets fired up and, and angry at people in this specific live stream right off the bat. Some guy, I mean, I don't know why you're so thin skinned if you're just taking questions. Seals equal great whites. Uh, uh, well, not a long, well, yeah. I mean, I'm far enough out where we definitely get, um, you know, some shark sightings, but, uh, yeah, I mean, we're on a boat, so who cares? This is fucking boy. Look at this idiot, dude. This isn't for you, brother. Uh, let me uh, let me get rid of him. Goodbye. We have no time for you. Like, like, what is the, what are you expecting? I'm hanging out with my people, hanging out with my people, making sure they're okay, making sure they're uh, ready for Christmas. You know, he's talking about going out of the boat the day before with some guy and look at it seals. Someone goes, this is fucking boring, which it is. And Opie immediately blocks him. Oh, okay. You're blocked. You don't, you think this is boring. <laughs> Opie, I mean, let it fucking slide for a second, buddy. Relax. Yeah. It's a wonder why his viewership is only declining when he's blocking. Like everybody new who joins the stream. Yeah. And they even say that too. He's like, Oh, that's not one of us. He's not one of us. <laughs> Yeah, at one point, uh, somebody new joins the chat. They leave some positive comment, and Opie's surprised. He's like, I seemed, I know 150 people in here, but he's shocked that somebody new is in there and not <laughs> insulting him. Yeah. He, he's got that Southern Gem mentality. He assumes everyone's a troll unless proven otherwise. Yeah. Which is probably a good way for him to live life. But I did think it was uh, funny. This is another person that he had a, he had a block um, who lets him know that other podcasts are talking about him. Uh. I don't care if other podcasts are talking about me. Why would I care about that? Why? 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 Why would you care? You're blocking people who just said boring in your chat. You obviously <laughs> care quite a bit. What do you mean? Why? <laughs> I like that he, he, tries so to, funny. he tries to go back and forth between this guy who's unaffected by everything. Like, dude, I just live my life. I don't give a shit. And then at the same time, just like, I don't want haters in here. Get out of here. Yeah. Consistency isn't Opie's thing. No, no, it is not. It's all over the place. Yeah. All right, you got a bunch of stuff on here. What did you pick up on? Clip number seven is pretty interesting. Um, Opie starts talking about his thumbs again, and he does this weird thing where um he can't just say something that's negative about him, like his uh his dumb thumbs. He brings that a lot. He brings that up all the time about how his thumbs are short. But when he does in this case, he has to preface it with something else. No, you see, I got a big piece. Yeah, I'll brag about it. Fuck yeah. I got a big piece, but my hands don't match. I got little stubby thumbs. You would think I would have big hands. I don't. I got a big piece, though. Yes, and I'm bragging. Why would you keep that to yourself? Of course I do. No one told me there was going to be boasting. I think it's been documented. Opie has some towels. And when he does the high voice, Opie, and of course, and this, this is how people talk when they're talking. That's what I think he's probably lying or exaggerating the truth. Oh, yeah, definitely. The other thing I was thinking about with his high voice, you know how like back in the ONA days, Opie's main things were like he was either the soundboard guy or he would go to the phones. Right. But now all he's got is his chat. And he doesn't have his soundboard because he doesn't even have a fucking microphone. Right. So now he has to do his own sound effects like fucking... Michael Winslow in Police Academy. So he's got this high voice thing. He's got his dog voice. He's just all over the fucking place. That really is what he's doing for entertainment now is not saying anything entertaining, but just making different voices, which have all pretty much become the same voice because it's also like the person who's losing their shit about what he's talking about too. Oh my God, you can't believe what he just said. <laughs> like everything's that same like high register OP voice. He's only got that one thing. Yeah, and that was the same thing for, uh, what was his character, Harry the Hater? Oh, it's right. the exact same voice. <laughs> I forgot about Harry the Hater. <laughs> <Don't> <laughs> be. It's so bad. 
But uh-huh. I, that, that's a, the most ridiculous thing. This is how I would present to you that I have a large penis. Uh, Eric, I have a very large piece. I'm very proud of it. I wouldn't go, yeah, I got a giant piece. It's a big piece. You can't believe well, you know it. What the, other, the other thing is, like, how many people with big dicks go out there and have to tell people about it? Like, usually other people strip, spread that information for you. Correct. And OP60, is he really still trying to, like, convince people that his dick's big? Does he, it really matter? And he doesn't have... Like, he's married... He doesn't have big dick energy either. Like Opie's the opposite of that. He's very sheepish. He's he's constantly embarrassing himself. I don't see it. No. <laughs> uh, but he's fun to watch. Uh, he is getting more fun to watch lately, isn't he? He really is. And it's mostly due to the chat. I mean, honestly, like that's all his show is, is just reading what other people say. I pulled this really quick ISO where he sounds like Stalker Patty. Listen to the way he talks on this. How are they not affected by this? What is he What is he doing? <laughs> How are they not affected by this? Is he trying to do a Stalker Patty? That was just out of nowhere, too. It wasn't like he was trying to do a voice or something. Yeah, he's got Lady Di's bloated face and Stalker Patty's <laughs> voice. <laughs> it's all come full circle, hasn't it? Yeah, really. Uh, and he looks homeless, like all the fucking like mustard and everyone he brought in. He's really become all the people he made fun of. Oh my gosh, it's funny you say mustard because you pulled a clip. Someone asked him about him playing guitar. Oh yeah. <laughs> I think you put a note out here that just said deuce chills. You still playing guitar? <laughs> yeah, man, all the time, you know? It's been uh it's been just wonderful just picking up my guitar. Just playing a few tunes, you know, acoustically. Just getting some of my uh, raw emotions out. Speaks to my soul, you know? <laughs> First off, I honestly didn't know that Opie played guitar. Is this a well-known thing? Yeah, I didn't know that either. I mean, Weird. he doesn't seem to have, like, uh, patience or focus enough to learn an instrument. So he could just be lying, but... You know he I, plays guitar. As soon as I heard him say that he plays guitar and he speaks to my soul and he gets his raw emotions out, my first thought was, I bet that he likes to do that Johnny Cash version of Hurt. I bet that's his go-to on the guitar. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I wouldn't doubt it, but I think the more likely answer is he doesn't fucking play. I mean, I don't <laughs> know about you. I, I play a guitar, but I've never once said, I'm going to go pour my emotions out, man. <laughs> no. I've never felt like going to go turn on some acoustic tunes and just chill back. It, it's never, like, I, I play guitar too, and it's never spoken to my soul. <laughs> it's just something I learned how yeah. to do. <laughs> it's like, uh, it's, it's like in the 40 year old virgin when he's trying to describe what tits are like, and he says they're like a bag of sand. <laughs> yeah, right. It's spoken by the guy who's never touched tits. Spoken by the guy who's never played a guitar. Yes, exactly. Yeah. It's so cathartic, man, when I strum an A chord and then a D minor chord. (laughs) Uh, The whole time I was listening to this, I can't get out of my head now the Will Noonan Brother Man impression. Because everything, and and I can't help but do it myself now, because the way Opie talks now is so over the top that he's doing a caricature of himself to the point where we can't even do impressions of him because he does it better than we do. Yeah, exactly. He's beyond parody. Right. And maybe that's been the strategy all along. I guess so. I'm, You know, maybe it's like that Trump thing where there were like tons of comedians trying to rip on Trump and they would exaggerate it. And it was like, this is already funny. You don't have to like take it to the nth degree to make this ridiculous. With Opie, it's like he's already you, you can't parody him. He's already ridiculous. Yeah, what am I going to do? Get on my show and talk to my dog for 10 minutes and then scream at someone who says it's boring? <laughs> like, that would be the thing that I would do to goof on Opie. He's like, that's what he's doing. That's not a goof on Opie. Yeah. That's just a show. <laughs> <laughs> I, can't, I can't top that. He's got me. <laughs> Sorry, Will. Yeah. <laughs> I think you're out of a job, he's the buddy. master of it all. I hope, I hope uh, Will still got the uh, Honda sales days uh, advertising dollars coming in because I think this uh, Opie thing's not going to work out for him too much longer. <laughs> he he does the best impression. I've never he seen does. better. He does. I know. It's so funny. It's so ridiculous that he picked that as the one that he was going to focus on, too. Well, I think it's one of those things where I, it probably started with the Joe Rogan spinning around in Manhattan video, where everyone who saw that <laughs> wanted to do a parody of that video because it was just the funniest thing. Yeah. <laughs> he, was, he was so serious about it. 
It's ridiculous how, like, passionate people are about making fun of Opie, but nobody goes and watches his shit. That's true. <laughs> like, there are so many eyes that want to know what he's doing, but they just don't... It's not enough for them to actually click on one of his live streams and sit through 40 minutes of him spinning around in the middle of the street. It's funny you say that, because with Stuttering John, it's just the opposite. Half the people watching John are there to goof on him and are watching for the entertainment value that is the opposite of what John thinks he's putting out. There's a whole, there's even that whole subreddit where people clip parts of Suttering John's show, and you don't even need commentary around it. Just, like, show Suttering John for 40 minutes or 40 seconds, act like an asshole, and it's hilarious. And with Opie, you're right. There's, there's a couple dozen people watching these live streams. Like, no one's paying attention to this shit. But when we play it for people, like, holy shit, that's what he's doing? That's hilarious. Yeah. I see people, like, in the comments of my videos saying, wow, this guy's ridiculous. Like, people who had no idea who Opie was before and are now just learning about him now. It's just absurd. Now, near the end of this video, so he's reading the messages that are coming in, and one of them is from Radio Gunk. You familiar with Radio Gunk, Eric? Uh, no, I'm not. So Radio Gunk is this podcast. It started as a message board on the internet and it was about most of you know popular radio shows but mainly about Howard Stern and it's it's looked at some other things as well but it's mostly lived in the Howard Stern universe and this woman Monique kind of runs the whole thing and uh, I guess that Radio Gunk was messaging Opie at the end here. <laughs> I see Todd Pettengill snorkeling in the background with a harpoon. What's up Radio Gunk? We're gonna uh, me and Radio Gunk are gonna do a little something something hopefully soon. Hopefully soon. I hope this is true. I hope because what Radio Gunk does is they goof on Howard Stern to, to no end. Like they've decided that Howard Stern's gone completely batshit and that the show sucks. And now, and I don't know if that was really Radio Gunk or if that was someone pretending to be Radio Gunk or what that was. Because that was not a funny thing to say. I see Todd Pettengill snorkeling in the background with a harpoon. Okay. It's not yeah. funny. <laughs> but so... Opie says that he's planning on doing something with Monique, so I am rooting for that. Let's hope that we can analyze Monique with uh, Opie. Uh, that sounds interesting. I'll have to check it out. Oh, you know what's yeah. funny about him bringing up Todd Pettengill? What's that? Todd Pettengill is still doing like shows for WWE. Like He is more successful than Opie at this point. So like him taking a jab at Todd Pettengill is really weird. Well, that was brought up by uh, Radio Gunk. However, I will say, Todd Pettengill has failed miserably in radio because he went on to do that behind the paywall show that failed. And he had to add, and he, he said it was because of COVID, which is bullshit. Because what else are you going to do than listen and stream videos? But uh, yeah, if there's one guy that Opie can goof on, it might be Todd. Maybe. Maybe, Maybe. I'm out of the loop. I didn't know Todd he was still working Pettengill. for wrestling. I thought, I thought he was all, all done with wrestling. If he's still doing that, then good on him, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I don't keep up with it, so I don't really know what the event was, but it was some AEW in the house bullshit. I don't know, but I saw him in a commercial, and I thought that was funny because Opie hasn't been in a commercial since 2012. He did that one TBS promo. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, which, by the way, is still the first thing that shows up when you Google Opie's uh, image search. That's how relevant <laughs> he is. Yeah. Although, to his credit, though, he wasn't holding on to a Zoom recorder in that shot. So I got to give him credit for that because when he went on Guy's Grocery Games, he still had to have that, like it's his blankie. He had to have that in his hand to keep him comfort. You know what's, you know what's really funny about that TVS picture is that that is like the only HD photo of Opie. Right. Because every time I go to make my thumbnails, there I have to pull these old SD photos of him. And there's just, even his live streams, they, they always look like shit because he's streaming from the beach off his data. Yes, and I think he does it on purpose. We talked about this on the bonus show a little bit this past week as we were talking about Stuttering John. Stuttering John also has a very low-resolution live stream that he puts up on YouTube. And then when he does stream from his phone and it's 4K, not 4K, but it's at least HD, you see how terrible he looks. You go, oh, gosh, I didn't realize he looked that bad. Opie might be doing the same thing because there's that one second that happened earlier this year where he took his hat off and he showed how bald he's become. And just that oh split second, I wish we had that in 1080 resolution, just that split second. You're like, Whoa, what happened to this guy? And of course he's never yeah. done that since then. 
No, but he's still so defensive about that comment. If you I ever know. bring up his hair. I know. It's great. Just, I have too much hair. If anything. <laughs> <laughs> what? What does that mean? <laughs> too much hair. All right. Let's 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 get through these clips. you got a bunch of stuff out here that you want to talk about. Yeah, there's a couple of other good ones. Uh, let me look which one it is. But it's when um, Opie was talking about the COVID lockdowns recently. And, yep. you know, he's all for it because he's already stashed away in his house alone. So it doesn't matter to him. But he was talking about his kids and how he's not particularly concerned about the effect that this is going to have on his kids. This is insane. Corey, I took my son out of school completely. He does virtual schooling through the K-12 system for now. I don't think that's the worst thing in the world, you know? I mean, a lot of uh, people talk about how the kids need to socialize and stuff. I'm not worried about that. This, the iPad takes care of that. My kids socialize a lot, an absolute lot with the iPad. So, This is an insane thought to have in your head, let alone to spit it out loud. He thinks that staring at an iPad is the same as socializing, which is interesting from a guy whose only interaction with people is talking into his phone on the beach or in his car waiting for the street sweeper. Exactly. That's exactly what I was thinking. And it's so, it's so fucked up that he's now forcing his same deranged lifestyle on them. Oh, he loves it. Yeah. He thinks that's great. And, and he was talking, he, he gets all into COVID and talking about how concerned he is about there's COVID in his uh, son's school. My son was exposed to COVID again. So we're like, we're kind of in another quarantine uh, situation, man. I, you know, and the school just sends out an email, all casual. Sorry to inform you. I'm like, yeah, you're informing us for the second time in, in a month. Something's not right at the school. My son shouldn't have been exposed to COVID twice in a month. So we're, uh, I'm not going to lie to you. We're on pins and needles. Uh, hoping he's all right. Uh, he seems all right. I love that. Opie's pissed off at the school. Opie, everyone has COVID right now. What are they going to do about it? What do you want them to do? What can I have COVID right now? What are you supposed to do about it? It's everywhere. Yeah, I know. Like, like it's the school's fault. What's wrong with the school? They're letting my kid get sick from a virus that's spreading everywhere. Also, this idea and- that he's on pins and needles about his son getting COVID, like, not for nothing. I know when you're a parent, obviously, there's going to be a lot of worry there, but statistically speaking, your kid is not going to get affected by COVID in any single way. You're fine. Don't worry about it. And he said it's four days later and he's, he's testing him again. He said he's perfectly fine. I don't yeah. understand the concern. I, I don't get it. I don't get it either. So he goes on to blame the school. They didn't even offer online learning this year because they wanted every goddamn kid in that, in those classrooms at a desk. So they didn't even offer that, which I, I find crazy. They should have done a, a hybrid. I mean, my kids would have went to school. I'm not going to sit here and make believe, but it would have been a nice option. They should have offered this thing that I would not have taken advantage of. <laughs> Why? It makes no fucking sense. <laughs> Why? He's just, he's just looking for things to complain about at this yep. point, and he's latched on to COVID. It doesn't matter what the topic is. He's just going to take the opposite side of Anthony and this COVID thing gives him an excuse to go hide in his house and live stream to people and never talk to anyone again. But he, he doesn't give a shit. He would send his kid there anyway. Yeah, that, that's literally what he just said. He's, he's all yeah. concerned that his kid might have COVID. He was exposed or whatever, you know, whatever we're talking about here. I mean, honestly, COVID has changed a lot in the last 20 months, right? We've, we've gone from COVID has a, a 5% chance of killing you to you might get the sniffles. Right. I think we've all kind of determined that it's not as big a deal these days, whether it's a Omicron variant or it's because you're vaccinated and boosted, whatever the reason is, it's not all of that uh, important or it's, it's, it's not all that significant now. I think you could say. And Opie, for some yeah. reason, even though he's hysterical about it, he's concerned that people don't understand all the information that he understands, he can't believe people don't understand this as well as he does. No, no, it's mind boggling. I think I could say this seriously, uh, like social media gets really freaked out when you talk about uh, the coronavirus. But I'm amazed by the amount of people that that don't realize that uh, even if you're vaccinated, you could get this thing. How do you not know that? But there are a lot of people out there that have no idea that you could still get it even if you're vaccinated. How do you not know the basics of this? 
they talk about it 24 hours a day on TV. How do you, how do you not pick up on just some of the basic crap? So Opie's indignant about this. How do you not know that I know this? How come you don't know this? What are you, an idiot? So I'm going to play for you a uh, quick little supercut that I heard on No Agenda this week. And this is all the news readers and politicians who explain when the vaccines came out that if you're vaccinated, you cannot get this uh, virus. You cannot transmit this virus. It will stop transmission. We should be able to manufacture a lot of vaccines, and, and that vaccine, a uh, key goal is to stop the transmission, to get the immunity levels up so that you get almost no almost no uh, infection going on whatsoever. Everyone who takes the vaccine is not just protecting themselves, but reducing their transmission uh, to other people and allowing society to get back to normal. We can kind of almost see the end. We're, we're vaccinating so very fast. Our data from the CDC today suggests... Um, you know, that that vaccinated people do not carry the virus, don't get sick. (laughs) Now we know that the vaccines work well enough that the virus stops with every vaccinated person. A vaccinated person gets exposed to the virus. The virus does not infect them. The virus cannot then use that person to go anywhere else. It cannot use a vaccinated person as a host to go get more people. That means the vaccines will get us to the end of this. Essentially, vaccines block you from getting and giving um, the virus. Fully vaccinated people are at a very, very low risk of getting COVID-19. Therefore, if you've been fully vaccinated, you no longer need to wear a mask. When people are vaccinated, they can feel safe that they are not going to get infected. We have all the vaccines we need. We just need our people to take it. A, for their own protection, for the protection of their family, but also to break the chain of transmission. You want to be a dead end to the virus. So when the virus gets to you, you stop it. You don't allow it to use you as the stepping stone to the next person. I think given the country as a whole, the fact that we have now about 50% of adults fully vaccinated and about 62% of adults having received at least one dose as a nation, I I'm, I feel fairly certain you're not going to see the kind of surges we've seen in the past. <laughs> if you're vaccinated, you're not going to be hospitalized. You're not going to be in an ICU unit, and you're not going to die. You're yeah. okay. You're not going to you're not going to get COVID if you have these vaccinations. All right, not to get political. Obviously, is not the point of this show. Just pointing out that I don't know why Opie is surprised. People are confused when the message has been quite the opposite. When these things first rolled out, and now he's going, how do people not know this? Well, Ope, who knows anything? Yeah, maybe those people uh, just weren't as informed as Opie is. Yeah, Opie obviously has uh, his finger on the pulse. I like people in the uh, Discord are picking up on the fact that you said Opie's just whatever the opposite of Anthony is. So if Anthony came out and was pro-vaccine, Opie would be wearing a KKK hoodie on the next episode. (laughs) I like that. (laughs) That's what it seems like. (laughs) I think we should test that. Uh yeah i mean it's not hard to i've always said this and and to everyone in the discord if you ever want opie to answer one of your questions or address something you say in the comments just start it off with love you ope and then he'll immediately put it on screen love you miss you is all you gotta say and yeah uh, yeah it doesn't matter what happens after that although opie was getting really angry with this guy kc who was in his chat and uh so it starts off with Opie talking about how much money him and Anthony made for Sirius XM. Me and Anthony, Anthony and I, however you want to say that, we made that compi, uh, company, getting cold out here, um, we made that company hundreds of millions of dollars, if not close to a bill. If not close to a bill, we brought in a lot of money for those guys in our heyday. First off, I'm not sure how he calculates this number that they made a billion dollars for the company. I'm not saying that it's wrong. I don't know how he calculates that, but I do find it funny that he's saying that the show he was on made a billion dollars for this company. And now he's asking people to give him stars on Facebook. Eric, do you know how much money you make from a star on Facebook? I have no idea. I didn't know either. So I looked it up. It's one penny. 
It is the smallest <laughs> amount of money you could possibly give somebody in these United States of America. Opie's saying he made a billion dollars for Sirius XM, and now he's going, if you could hit, me, hit me some stars for me, I'd really appreciate it. And he loses his mind when somebody gives him 20 bucks on a super chat. So anyway, yeah, you heard... he did. He... <laughs> Go ahead. He did get a uh, twenty dollars for that Christmas tree last stream. So yeah, he gets very He's excited. Making the big bucks. So after explaining, you know that that him and, and Aunt did so well, you notice he corrected his grammar there, and Casey has something to say about that. Casey's corrected my grammar. Casey, I know this is becoming a bit, but very soon it's going to be a block and not a timeout. You are in timeout. No one corrects my grammar. No one. Technically, it's uh, it's Anthony and I, I guess, but that just sounds stupid. Everyone knows the the better way to say it is me and Anthony. Okay, that's okay. <laughs> I guess this is the same guy who's like, I don't know why they taught us math in school. I don't need to know math. Grammar is stupid. Oh, I mean, <laughs> some of these it's, things it's are funny for a that, reason. That that's the same reason why the show is called Opie and Anthony, despite the fact that Anthony's the one that people came for. Right. It's because Opie thought, no, me and Anthony sounds better. That's <laughs> true. I think you're right about that. So he's yelling at this guy, Casey, who I think is an actual fan of the show, and he's putting him in timeout. I don't know if you if you listen throughout this stream, there's multiple times like, all right, Casey, you're in timeout again. And you're getting real close to being blocked. And then by the end of it, he's done. With Casey. Oh, God. I, uh, Casey, I think we're at the end of the road for real. I think we're at the end of the road, my brother. You just have to be that guy. So let me tell you what happened here. That Opie finally decided he needs to block this guy. Opie is talking about how he might do a live stream at 3 a.m. while wrapping gifts. And people are going on and going, hey, man, I get the notifications. If you come on at 3 a.m., I will be there. He's, oh, cool. All right. Yeah, I might do that. And then KC says, I'll do it and make fun of COVID. Because I guess KC was making some COVID jokes during this live stream. And that was the comment that Opie goes, all right, man, that's it. Can't have you around here anymore. You're just, uh, you're trolling me way too hard. I can't take it anymore. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I saw that part. Uh, I think it was because uh, one of his fans mentioned how he was in the hospital and, you know, when you post a comment on Facebook, you could see their profile picture. Yeah. Guy was looking a little overweight. And uh, I think KC pointed that out. I think that was what initially got him on Opie's shit list. Yeah. Well, it's also kind of funny, though. Oh, it's completely funny. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. I'm glad we're on the same page. Oh, yeah. Do you think I'm above making fun of fat people? <sighs> I would hope not. Not on this show. Exactly. I've done entire episodes. Two, two and a half hours long of just making fun of fat people. Which ones? Oh my gosh, we've uh, who's that woman, the the fat black stand up comedian who's on TBS? Oh, Miss Pat? No, well, no, not Miss Pat. <laughs> I wouldn't make fun of Miss Pat; she'd fucking kill me. Um, uh, something Byers, Nicole Byers. What's her name? Someone in the chat will let me know. Yeah, that's right, Nicole Byers. Yeah, I think uh, Dick Masterson and I. Spent about an hour and a half making fun of how fucking fat she is. Because she does, she has a pod, the, the reason why is she's asking for it. She has a podcast called Why Won't You Date Me? And, uh, why won't you? What, what do you mean? I can't believe I can't find a boyfriend. You can't. Yeah. Get the fucking funhouse mirror out of your bathroom. <laughs> get a real fucking mirror. And then look at the fucking Instagram. And tell me why yeah. you think you can't get a date. When you can see your feet again, then you'll get a date. <laughs> yeah. I thought... I thought, you know, the big fan of Dick, I've heard him talk for hours about that Tess Holiday chick. Oh, yeah. That one that they put on the front of the magazine. We, we've talked she about is, her, too. <laughs> yeah. She is fucking outrageously fat. Oh, th th that's the problem is she is flaunting it. She's completely unhealthy. She's a terrible role model for other women. And for some reason, she's a model. I like how they they Photoshop her, too. And then even when they airbrush her and make her look as good as she can, she still has folds rolling over folds. <laughs> She's got, there's no, her, her knees have been consumed by fat. It looks like you, you, I don't, just absurdly fat. I'm going to get angry if I keep going on about this bitch. Girls like her is what keeps Blue Chew in business. And if you want to get a free sample, O-P-I-E, that's Blue Chew. All right, what else did you pick up on from this live stream? 
Oh, there are a lot of good moments. Uh, let's take a look. Oh, if you go to uh, clip number 14, Opie has a new theory about birds. That's why birds aren't real. Oh, excuse me. I got the hiccups now. I wasn't all in with the flat earth stuff. Not at all. But I'm all in with the whole uh, birds aren't real thing because how do you live your life on the ocean, he was saying, for some of these birds, and they never come in. They live their entire lives on the water. That's like that's just like horrific to think about. Oh, my God. He's so stupid. Yeah, they live their entire lives on water. Wait till he finds out about fish. Yeah. I, wait, they're living in the water? I can go in the water for like 30 minutes, but then I get prune hands. They're living in the water? <laughs> the, the great part about that is uh, before that, that conversation started because Pat Duffy and chat, apparently this is a reoccurring theme where Opie talks about birds not being real. Yeah. And Pat Duffy's a believer that birds are actually drones. Correct. And so... Because Pat Duffy is the only friend Opie has left from the ONA days, he's just, he accepts that. If anybody says anything even slightly not on his side with COVID, they're blocked. But Pat Duffy can believe <laughs> birds are fucking drones charging on power lines. And Opie's like, ah, yeah, make some good points. Yeah. And by the way, anytime you have to prefer something with, I'm not a flat earth guy, but whatever you're <laughs> about to say is just as stupid as the flat earth theory. So just stop right there. Well, yeah, uh, you know, there's a there are a couple of good clips from this uh, live stream. If you go to clip number 11, we get to hear about the grudge that Opie's still holding. Oh, yeah. Scott Greenstein to this day. Go fuck yourself. Go fuck yourself. I know we're good these days, but go fuck yourself. That's what I say. Scott Greenstein uh, is the programmer, the big uh He's in charge of all programming at Sirius XM. Go fuck yourself. Yeah, so Opie's got a really big problem with Scott Greenstein still to this day. He's still angry at this guy. He can hold a grudge. Yeah, so this is Opie talking about the reason why he's mad at Scott Greenstein. And he says fuck Scott Greenstein many, many times throughout this is because he wanted to get his photo taken with you too. When U2 was uh, at Sirius XM. And when he wasn't able to get his photo taken with them, he realized that he was on his way out. Fast forward a whole bunch of years. Now I'm uh, now I'm like, uh, I'm just used goods. I'm on my last leg as far as Sirius XM goes. I'm not on my last leg as far as my career goes. What does that mean? Does he think Westwood One was still going well with his career? Why did he say that? He goes, he goes, I know I was on my last legs at Sirius XM. But what, not my career, though. That was the end of your career. What do you mean? What are you talking, what are you talking about? Is you can't play 15 seconds of OP audio without him contradicting himself at least once. That's true. So this is him talking about uh, you two and Scott Greenstein. Fuck you, Scott Greenstein. Long story short, he blew me off. I didn't get my picture with you two, and I had to watch Scott Greenstein put both his arms around the band like they were best buddies, taking all these pictures that he doesn't care about. And I love that he projects that Scott Greenstein got his photo with you two, and he doesn't even care about it. I would have appreciated it. He doesn't even care about it. And then in a breath not longer, than, not too much later than that, he, Opie goes, there's not a single thing in my house that would show you that I used to be on the Opie and Anthony show. You wouldn't even know I was on that show because there's nothing in my house that would show you that. It's like, well, then you probably wouldn't have a photo with you two, and you were just yelling at Scott Greenstein for not, okay. Yeah. Whatever. It, everything everything is a slight against Opie. In his mind, everybody's always conspiring against him. So <laughs> right. Scott Greenstein getting a picture with you two was just the final nail in the coffin for him. He's just a star fucker, man. He doesn't even care about you two. <laughs> I went and saw you two a dozen times growing up. Opie, none of that matters. Scott Greenstein, with his position as Sirius XM, can get a photo with any celebrity that goes in there. You just gotta gotta live with that. Sorry, that's life. What a lame band to hold a grudge this many years later for. Like maybe I'm maybe I'm just an asshole, but I don't like you too. So I would. It's such a funny band that Opie's like this upset over. Couldn't he just get a picture with like Brother Joe's Two You cover band? Right. The that's same what I shit. would think. Yeah, they sound the same. Yeah. 
All right, so going to, getting back to birds real quick, I have to play this clip because I want to discuss this one with you. Not that I'm an expert on migration patterns. I am not. But I, we have to talk about this. How long does it take a bird to fly from Antarctica to Long Island? And how does it know to fly from Antarctica to, to Long Island? Because it's uh, a bit warmer here. Because it just gets too fucking cold in Antarctica for these birds. According to Opie, there are birds that he's seeing on Long Island that fly from Antarctica because they need to get out of the cold of Antarctica to the warmth of New York State. Now, correct me if I'm wrong here. I, I don't own a globe currently, but I had one as a child. In order to fly from Antarctica to New York State, wouldn't you have to fly through things like the equator? Like, wouldn't there be warmer spots than Long Island if you were a migrating bird who was looking for warmth? Just don't fucking think about it. it. It doesn't matter. He's just he's just looking for things to talk about. Fucking birds from Antarctica flying over the long. There's thousands of places they could have landed in between. It makes makes no goddamn sense. It makes sense. no goddamn sense. And I was I did a quick Google search. I'm trying to figure that. Like, aren't there actually birds that do that? I couldn't find any. But I I think what happened was he was out with some guy on a boat a day or two before this, and the guy was just. Telling him all sorts of bullshit, and Opie's just eating it all up and regurgitating it on his show. That would be a fun thing to do if you're friends with Opie. Tell him a bunch of crazy bullshit, and then listen to him regurgitate it like he's a fucking Mr. Science on his next podcast. <laughs> and wouldn't, wouldn't it make more sense for the birds to fly to Long Island if it was a flat Earth? Uh. Doesn't it seem like it's kind of a fucking hassle if it was round? Now so he's like, he's slowly... He's slowly devolving into the person that he hates. Like, come next year, he's going to be all on board for the Flat Earth. Oh, God, I hope so. I would love to hear Opie try to convince people that the Flat Earth is real. I would <laughs> I would pay any amount of money on Patreon for that, Opie. I, forget about <laughs> your stars on Facebook. I'm talking five, ten bucks a month Patreon subscriber. If you want to convince me that the Flat Earth is real, I'm in. I. I will start a GoFundMe and we will <laughs> finance a trip for Opie out of orbit so he can go up and try to observe that there is no curvature in the earth, that it is actually just a disc. Love it. Love it. Let's get back to that picture with uh, with you too, because you actually have a clip on here where oh, this is why Opie's so enraged that he did get a picture, but it's not good. I don't even know where the picture is. I'm not even close to not one of the band members and Bono's, you know, has his arms around somebody and edge and Adam and I'm in the back and my head is this big. It's just teeny weeny in the back and Greenstein couldn't care less. And that was my, that was the first sign. I'm like, Oh, I'm done here. Oh, Oh, I see what's going on here. That was the first sign, Opie? Not when you got booted from mornings and put into afternoons with Vic Henley? That wasn't the first time you realized that? It was when you didn't get a great pick with you 2 And and it's not like Scott Greenstein put him behind taller people. Why did he fucking stand there? <laughs> right. He's, he wasn't the one like, all right, you over here. I want you in the front with, with Bono. <laughs> Scott doesn't care. Yeah. Ah, Scott Greenstein didn't provide me with lifts for my shoes. He <laughs> fucked me. He's a real star fucker. That, that's hilarious. Uh, all right, what else do you want to talk about here? Oh, let's see what else we got. Um, well, we could talk about Opie's gifts for this year. Okay. Apparently him and his wife are doing something a little different. I think that's clip number one. What's uh, Santa bringing you? Oh, oh, my God, me and my wife. She's the best. We're like, look wash let's go wash this year so we're literally just worrying about the kids which i think that's good i think when you get to my age you know i don't think you should be buying presents for adults anymore oh my god i have a theory on this and i'm sure you do too opie's talking about how him and his wife aren't going to exchange gifts wouldn't they both come out of his bank account isn't that why he's excited about this yep absolutely <laughs> Like, I, I don't want her buying stuff for me. That's my money. Yeah, a, a couple of seconds after he says that, he goes, and I just buy her whatever she wants, you know, not on holidays. And she buys me things with my money. And it's like, oh, well, that's why you're that. excited. I didn't even hear that part. But, but what's even funnier is it's Opie's wife that suggests not to get each other gifts. 
So mm-hmm. she was saying, I don't even want to spend your money on you. So <laughs> fuck it. Let's not get any. And he tries to play it off like, what a great idea. I'm saving money. It does seem like a lot of work to spend someone else's money on someone. Yeah, let's just skip that. Yeah. You know, honestly, I have a solution to this because this happens to me all the time. If you start doing your Christmas shopping late November, early December, and you just start having a bunch of Amazon packages show up to your house, you totally forget by Christmas Day what the fuck's in any of those things. So you could just shop for yourself and have it be a surprise. Yeah. Oh, shit. This is, I needed this. I needed this three weeks ago. Sweet. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, I, I would take that over Opie's plan of just <laughs> quietly <laughs> resenting each other into marriage. And after <laughs> how, how many years have they been married? It hasn't been that long. Like, it hasn't been maybe a little over a decade, and they're already saying, ah, fuck gifts. We don't need that anymore. It hasn't been know. that long. Ask Mrs. Opie if it hasn't been that long. <laughs> Ask that's her what she that's a about fair that. point. <laughs> it's been an eternity for her, but. <laughs> it's a life sentence. Yeah. <laughs> uh, she's a brave soul. She I feel is. I feel so bad for her. I can't even imagine what it's like to live with this guy. He seems like he's lost his mind. Yeah, and and the problem is that that Bam shit is so funny, and I know it like it, it's got to suck for her, but people only do it like nobody genuinely wants to fuck with Lindsay. They're just trying to fuck with Opie, right? But it the problem is it's it's funny. Is that so the, is that the I'll just, problem? I'll just feel, <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm still gonna make fun of him for that, but I I'll feel bad for Lindsay at the same time. Um, I want to get back to talking about him. And dealing with the uh, the trolls, and this could be KC again, where the guy is making COVID jokes. And this might be what you were talking about before, where the one guy's in the hospital, and he thinks he's overweight, and uh, Opie scolds him. KC, for real, knock it off. It's not. It's not fucking funny, man. There's a million places you go to be a fucking dick. Will Will literally is still not breathing on his own, so fucking leave it alone, man. I mean, you could easily go to a million places and be a fucking dick. <laughs> leave it alone, man. <laughs> That's why I love that clip so much. I'm, I get so excited whenever I hear a new leave it alone get dropped. How has he not made that into a shirt yet? He has, like, the worst fucking merch designs, but it's everything else he says is a catchphrase and an instant classic, but not leave it alone. He should have a shirt that says, you want to go there? And then on the back it says, leave it alone. Oh, you want (laughs) to go there? (laughs) It's the worst. There's a million other places you can go and make COVID jokes. Not on Opie's stream. This is where the happy-go-lucky Facebook group gets together and give... Opie pennies at a time. That's the point yeah. of that. You go, you go make those COVID jokes over on Stuttering John's stream. You leave Opie alone. Yeah, there's a million other places. So then he blocks the guy who says that Opie stinks. And this is hilarious. Hey, Opie stink. Well, that's an easy one, right, guys? All right, hold on. I just I just entertained the hell out of people for the last 40 minutes, and this idiot's gonna say I stink. Yeah, okay. All right. This is my favorite clip, and I wanted to wait to play it because I wanted everyone to hear what he thinks entertainment is. So we've heard all of these clips and all the things that he's been talking about, and he goes, I've been entertaining people for 40 minutes. You've been talking about nothing. Yeah, that when I sat through that stream, I was I was going through it for the same reason you were, just looking for things that he said. And when I got to that 40-minute mark, it had been like two hours because I kept having to take breaks and just be like, all right, I'll, I'll do something else, and then I'll eventually trudge my way through this but to, for him to think he's entertaining the hell out of people by reading chat is it's just amazing i go through hours of podcasts every week to prepare for my show and especially when i get up in the morning on a day that we're recording i plan on going through hours of material to pull clips and discuss things and today i felt like this was going to be easy it's 50 minutes of opie doing a live stream and Holy shit. I, same thing here. It took me hours and hours to get through it because I was just, I constantly found myself distracting myself, looking at it for other things to do. I'm like, I, I got to just focus on this thing. I got it done. It's so boring and ridiculous. And I don't understand that there's even a dozen people who hang out in this chat and hang out with Opie. I, I to the, for the life of me, I don't know what these fucking people are doing. 
<laughs> and they're they're fucking committed. They've been there like since the start. It's the same people yes. coming over and over again. And by by the end, I just had to put it to like one and a half times speed because I was just like, all right, well, we'll rush through this. That was smart on your part. Yeah. The pod squad is there hanging out the happy go lucky pod <laughs> squad, the people who still hang out with uh, Opie. A couple more things on here and then we can move on. Uh, this is. Opie wants Eric Nagel to know that he's now totally caught up on nerd culture. And it's too bad, man. Maybe they can be friends again someday in the future and chat Marvel. Eric was amazed at the lack of knowledge I had for, for geek culture in general. For my uh, Marvel knowledge, it was non-existent. And now I'm there, man. Look, Thanos. Finger snap. I know my shit now. <sighs> What a, what a deep pull that is, Thanos. <laughs> he really knows his shit. Yeah. Jaws, I know my shit. Bigger <laughs> boat. The, the most fucking base level shit. I don't even watch those fucking Marvel movies, and I know that that purple guy snaps. It's, it's ridiculous. <laughs> Very impressive, Opie. Maybe you and Eric could patch things up and, uh, and be friends. I love the way that... Uh, Opie ends this show. Now, remember, Opie knows what he's doing. Just babble. He knows he's just babbling because that's all he can do. The way he ends this show is so abrupt. I did not edit this. This is how the show ends. I don't know. I'm just babbling. Just let me go. Guys, I'll talk to you soon, all right? Uh, I I, uh, I don't know how to end this one for some reason. I, I'll that that reminds me of the clip where he was in his car and somebody said somebody typed in the chat, Opie is a kid toucher, and he put it up on screen. <laughs> and then he he fumbles with his phone and closes out of his live stream. And so <laughs> it's just a blank screen with that message for like a full minute until he gets back on and realizes it's still there. Oh, it's phenomenal. It's so great. People aren't fucking with Opie enough, in my opinion. He really deserves more of it. Really? Uh, Toon Skins in the Discord. Did anyone see Opie's beanie cap joint? Yes. In fact, the latest episode of Speaking for Funny documents that pretty well. Yeah, because uh, I Opie got me this time. I think he did that for clickbait because when I saw his live stream, the comment was up, uh, light that J, you Nancy. And it was Opie with the joint pointed to the camera. And so I was like, oh, did he get caught? And then I went back just a couple minutes and he's showing it off. I I have no idea why he then went into, let me pretend I had no idea that it was there. And I saw so many people in the comments saying like, oh, it's probably a CBD joint or, oh, it's Delta 8. And it's like, no, I mean, Opie could probably get real weed. Like lame people smoke weed too. <laughs> yeah, no shit. It's, it's not that impressive these days. Yeah, but people people want to distance themselves so much from Opie that they're like, no, I don't do the same drugs as that loser. <laughs> right, yeah. Oh, if Opie likes weed, then I hate weed. I just do meth now if Opie likes weed. <laughs> exactly. Uh, this is the last clip I want to play, and this is one that you had. Um, responding to someone saying uh, happy Kwanzaa. I come from a time. All right, let me think. I come from a time. This is real shit, real talk. I come from a time there were two uh, holiday celebrations that you chose from. Choose that uh, you choose from um, that I know of. I'm sure there were more, but that's just you know what I knew. Uh, we had three or four TV channels. We had two genders. We had one phone on the wall with a long cord. That's fascinating. Please go on. All right, Boomer Talk. Jesus Christ. What? <laughs> Yeah, things have progressed pretty quickly. I When I grew up, yeah. listen to this, Eric. When I was growing up, we didn't have the internet in my house. Whoa. I know. Did you have iPhones? No. No, a phone. Oh, the only thing you could do is make phone calls. Can you believe it? Man, what a what a crazy world. I would listen to 45 minutes <laughs> of you just talking about that. I, we only had three or four channels, man. Oh, okay, Grandpa. Tell me again about how everyone had to watch MASH. And and Kwanzaa was like, 
Kwanzaa was invented in 66, so Opie was like three then. It's not like he went most of his life without Kwanzaa. And it's never it's been popular. That. It's not like Kwanzaa all of a sudden took over in the 90s or something. Like, that before my time. Nobody even talked about this. Like, it's, it's always been kind of a weird thing. Yeah. It's all the rage. All of Opie's neighbors <laughs> have Kwanzaa menorahs up. Who are these podcasts? W-A-T-P.